in today's lecture we will discuss uh, the topic of cam design we already did the linkages design and we did the position velocity analysis and acceleration analysis of the linkages now we will move to the cam design so we will discuss these contents in this lecture we will start with the introduction in which we will see how the cam followers are different from the linkages and what are the pros and cons of uh, cam and follower mechanism and what are the application of cam and follower mechanism then we will move to the next topic which is the cam terminology in the cam terminology topic we will see the different terminologies which are related to the cam follower mechanism different terms different specifications for example the shape of the follower for example the type of motion of the follower uh, type of joint flower type of motion constraints which are involved in the cam follower mechanism so these are some of the term terminologies which we will discuss in today's lecture then we will move to the main topic of our today's lecture which is svaj diagram so we will see what are those svaj letters and how we can make those svaj diagram and what information we get from those uh, svaj diagram so that is the main topic of today's lecture so in the end we will discuss double dual cam design so we discussed the term dual in our previous lectures dual means a pause so whenever there is a requirement of pause in a mechanism then we use the cam follower mechanism we discussed the geneva mechanism we discussed the uh, ratchet pole mechanism so all in all of those mechanism there was a dual there was a pause during the during the course of the motion okay so whenever there is a requirement of dwell in the motion then we use the cam follower mechanism so what does this double dwell mean double dwell means uh, during the complete revolution of the cam follower will basically experience dwell two times so there will be two dwells against one revolution of the cam two dwells in the follower dwell is always experienced by the follower whereas the cam is in continuous rotational motion so we will discuss all of these things in detail in today's lecture so cam follower system so cam follower system is frequently used in different machines and in mechanism the main application is in the automobile engine so we know that in the automobile engine the main drive shaft is the crank shaft the power of crank shaft is transferred to the cam shaft through the belts or chain so cam shaft what is uh, happening basically there is a shaft which is actually actuating actuating the valves and what are the function of those valves the valves are basically opening and closing the intake and outlet of the Uh, cylinders cylinders in which the air fuel mixture can come in and uh, the combustion process can take place so that is the main application of the cam follower mechanism so that is basically in the cam shaft or engine head assembly of automobile engine other than that the cam follower mechanism is frequently used in the packaging or assembly plants of fmcgs fmcg se murad ke basically all of those items which we consume on the daily basis for example the milk bread or any other packaged food or goods which we use in our daily life that is fast moving consumer goods so whenever there is a automation going on in industry in the packaging or in assembly uh, then the cam follower mechanisms are used uh, frequently because uh, generally a product is moving along a conveyor and then we have to perform some action on that one so in order to perform that action we want that product to stop for a while which is dwell so that kind of motion we can achieve with the help of the cam follower mechanism so now we will compare the cam follower mechanism with the linkage so if we compare the cam follower mechanism with the linkage then the cam follower mechanisms are generally easy to design as compared to linkages so we will see the design process of cam follower 
and then we will we will decide or then we will reevaluate how the cam design is easier as compared to linkage design as far as manufacturing is concerned and the price of manufacturing the cam follower mechanism is difficult to manufacture and the manufacturing of cam follower mechanism is expensive once again we are talking with reference to the linkage so as compared to linkages cam follower mechanism is difficult to manufacture and expensive to manufacture and when we talk about the space requirements of those two type of mechanism then the cam follower mechanism is more compact as compared to linkage uh, the cam follower mechanism will occupy less space as compared to the linkages and whenever there is a space constraint then cam follower mechanism is preferable there is a term which is known as the critical path motion so those application in which the path of motion is critical we will see this critical path motion in the next slides what is this critical path motion and there is another term which is critical extreme positions so we will see what are those motion constraints in the cam follow mechanism how many linkage how many links we have we have three links we have a cam which is the link one then we have the follower which is the link three and then we have the ground so these there are basically three links whereas the fourth link of the four bar which is replaced in the cam follower mechanism is the coupler there is no coupler in the cam follower mechanism if we look at this one on the left what is happening we have a we have a cam which is rotating then we have a follower which is also rotating so in this cam follower mechanism this is basically modified form of a four bar linkage in which this is the link 2 this is the effective link 3 and this is the link 4 we know how we can get this effective link first of all we have to draw the common tangent between these two curves and then we have to draw the normal of that common tangent in this way we can get this effective link 3 in this cam follower mechanism what is happening the follower is basically in rotational motion whereas on the right side the follower is in translatory motion so that is the first classification of the cam follower mechanism and that is on the basis of uh, follower motion type of follower motion whether the follower is in rotary motion or whether the follower is in translatory motion the second classification is according to the the shape of the follower what is the shape of the follower so in this diagram you can see that the follower is basically a roller and that roller is making contact with the cam whereas on the right side what we have the follower is flat this is the flat faced follower whereas the cam is the generic cam which is used in all of those uh, mechanisms the shape of the follower is one of the method with the help of which we can classify the cam follower mechanisms so in different applications we use different type of cams and if you talk about the automobile engines so both of those configurations are used in automobile engines so this is basically a tappet based cam follower system whereas this is a roller based cam follower system then we have another classification or another terminology which is related to the cam and that is the type of joint closure we discussed this topic in the first lecture as well the terminologies or classification of joints so this is something which is very much similar to that classification of joint so uh, we have two type of joint closure as far as the cam and followers are concerned one is the force close the other one is the form close what about these ones these are form closed because the geometry of the cam and follower or the assembly of the cam and follower is basically not allowing the cam and follower to separate from each other whereas in this one what is happening this is a force closed a spring is basically applying the force on the follower and with the help of that force the cam and follower are maintaining their contact the next one is the type of motion constraints so in the type of motion constraints we have two type of motion constraints number one is the critical extreme position the other one is the critical path motion this critical extreme position topic the topic of this critical extreme position we will discuss that topic in detail in today's lecture whereas this topic the critical path motion will be discussed in the next lecture 
so in critical extreme position we are only interested in the extreme positions of the follower for example if a follower is in uh, translatory motion we are just interested in moving the follower from its bottom position to its top position we are not concerned about the uh, velocity or acceleration or the path which the follower basically follows in order to achieve that uh, position cep's approach or c EP is a type of cam follower problem in which we are interested in the start and finish position of the follower not we are not interested in the intermediate positions or the path which the follower basically follows to achieve that extreme position when we are talk about the critical extreme position problems the designer is free to choose any mathematical function to go from bottom to the top position okay so when we will discuss few numericals so this critical extreme position topic will be more clear to you the other one is the critical path motion so in the critical extreme position only the extreme positions are important we just want to achieve the extreme positions the path is not important whereas in the next one the path is basically very important obviously the extreme positions are also important in this one but the more important is the path which the follower follows to achieve those positions how the follower moves from uh, bottom position to the top position or from the left most position to the right most position what were the velocities what were the displacements what were the accelerations what mathematical function it used to achieve that motion so this is something which is critical path motion we will discuss those topics in detail in the coming slides the other terminology is the type of motion program so how many dwells do we have in a cam cycle cam cycle means when the cam completes one revolution how many dwell are basically experienced by the follower so there are basically three type of motion programs number one is the rise fall so in this rise fall what we have we have let's say 180 degree for 180 degree rotation of cam the follower is rising whereas for the rest of the 180 degree rotation of the cam what is happening the follower is falling down so there is no dwell it means the follower will be in continuous motion so generally when we have this kind of motion requirement then we do not use the cam follower mechanism when we have no dwell then linkages are more feasible more suitable as compared to the cam follower mechanism but if we want the dwell dwell means we want the follower to pause or to stop for some time then we use the cam follower mechanism for example this type of motion program in which we have the rise then we have the fall and then we have the dwell during the 360 degree rotation of cam the follower is basically rising and then it's falling back and then it's not moving it's in stationary position that is rfd rise fall and dwell so we have another type of motion program in which we have two dwells we have the rise then dwell then fall then dwell all of these rise fall dwell is with respect to the follower not with respect to the cam we are assuming the cam is rotating continuously with a fixed angular velocity so if we talk about the rise fall system or the motion program there is no dwell in that one whereas in rise fall dwell system we have one dwell and in rdft which is rise dwell fall dwell we have two dwells one after the rise and one after the fall so now we'll move to the next topic which is svaj diagram first of all we should know what what are those svaj letters or what are the full forms of those letters s stand for displacement v stand for velocity a stand for acceleration and j stand for jerk we discuss jerk in the topic of acceleration analysis so jerk is basically the time rate of change of acceleration so that is the jerk the unit of jerk is meter per second cube or inch per second cube or millimeter per second cube so in svaj diagram or in the cam design what is the main objective or what is the main task which the designer has to perform that task is 
to select the most suitable mathematical function to achieve the extreme position of the follower. So mathematical function for the displacement, for the velocity and for the acceleration. Extreme position is only related to the displacement but we are interested in the velocity and acceleration of the follower as well. So we will discuss why the velocity and accelerations are also important. So in the linkages we discussed that we are basically interested in the acceleration of the moving parts. Why? Because because of that acceleration what is happening? We are getting the dynamic forces which are actually causing the stresses on the parts and there is a possibility that some part may undergo uh, the plastic deformation or the deformation which is irreversible or some change in the shape due to which the machine can no longer perform its uh, intended role. So that's why uh, there is a need to keep an eye on the acceleration both in the linkages and in the camp follower mechanism. So let's say we want the follower to move from 0 position to 1 inch. What is the easiest way possible that is the linear we use the linear function we use a mathematical function which is a straight line equation of straight line so using the equation of straight line what we can do we can achieve we can move the follower from let's say 0 inches to 1 inches in a given period of time or for 90 degree rotation of the cam. Okay, so that is the easiest possible function or displacement function with the help of which we can move the follower from one extreme position to the another extreme position. But that is not the only thing which the designer has to perform. He has to keep an eye on the other derivatives of displacement as well which are velocity, acceleration and jerk. So in SVAJ diagram what we have we have two axes Okay, on the y-axis what we have? We have the functions of displacement, velocity, acceleration and jerk. Whereas on x-axis what we have? We have angular displacement of the camshaft or we can have the time. So we can easily convert or we can easily go from the angular displacement to the time domain using this, this function or this equation which is theta is equal to omega t. If we have the angular velocity of the cam available, we can shift from angular displacement to time and vice versa. Okay, so now we will see a program or SVAJ diagram of a particular cam follower system. So first of all, we are talking about segment 1. In segment 1, what is happening? The follower is moving from 0 millimeters to 25 millimeters it can be from top to bottom or from left to right or from right to left but the distance which the cam is covering in the segment 1 is 25 millimeters and that motion of follower is basically occurring when the cam is rotating from 0 to 60 degree so when cam is at 0 degree the follower is at 0 mm displacement but when the cam starts rotating what will happen the follower will start moving towards its extreme position and when the cam rotate itself for 60 degree then what will happen the follower will move from 0 to 25 millimeters okay so this extreme position is achieved against 60 degree rotation of cam so this is what this is a rise segment we know we have three terms rise fall and dwell what is this cycloid this cycloid is a mathematical function which is used to move the follower from 0 to 25 mm so this is basically the curve of cycloid function we will discuss those function in detail in the coming slides so this is the start angle of this segment which is the rise segment and this, this is the end angle of the segment. These are the angles of the camshaft and the delta angle is 60 degree. So delta angle is basically represented by beta. So that beta is basically the difference between the end angle and the start angle of the camshaft. We will use that beta term in our mathematical functions which we are going to cover in the next slides. So the second function or the second segment is what? That is dwell. So now what is happening? 
the cam is already rotated 60 degree the follower is at 25 mm displacement but the cam is in continuous motion so what will happen the cam will rotate for another 30 degree but for that 30 degree rotation of cam the follower will not move the follower will maintain its position position of 25 mm so that is the dwell for the follower and the beta for that segment is 30 degree so the segment 3 in segment 3 what is happening that is the fall segment fall segment it means the follower is now coming back to its bottom position it means the follower is going back or coming back from 25 mm to 0 mm level and this is happening when the cam is rotating from 90 degree to 150 degree so for 60 degree rotation of cam what will happen to follower follower will return from 25 millimeter level to 0 millimeter level so that is the fall and the mathematical function which we are using for this fall is modified sine function modified sine function we will discuss it in the coming slides so the fourth segment is dwell so now the follower is at lower extreme position the cam is still rotating the cam will rotate for 30 more degrees but the follower will maintain its position at its lower extreme position that is the segment number four in this diagram what we are seeing we are just seeing the displacement so in svaj diagram we are just focusing on s diagram at this point of time the displacement diagram okay so this is a modified trapezoid function that is a mathematical function which we are using to move the follower from 0 to 25 millimeter level this happened when the cam rotated from 180 degree to to 40 degree for 60 degree rotation of cam what will happen the follower will once again move from its lower extreme position to higher extreme position then there is a dwell the six segmented dwell means the cam will rotate for 30 degrees but there will be no change in the position of the follower the seven segment is the fall using the simple harmonic function we will discuss the simple harmonic function later on so for 60 degree rotation of cam shaft what is happening the follower is coming back from its higher extreme position to lower extreme position so beta for this segment is 60 and in the last segment what is happening that is once again a dwell it means the follower will maintain its position at the lower extreme position and the cam will rotate for another 30 degree to complete its one revolution so in the one revolution of cam what is happening so this is the summary of all the segments so there are basically eight segments in the first segment what is happening the follower is rising then there's a pause then the follower is falling down then there's a pause once again so in the fifth segment the follower is once again rising then there's a pause then the follower is falling and in the end there is a pause once again so these are the delta angles or the beta values of all of those segments so this is the s diagram of this cam follower system so this is the rise then we have a dwell then this is a fall then once again we have a dwell then we have a rise, dwell, then fall, and then dwell. This is the displacement diagram. So now this is the velocity diagram. After displacement, we have the velocity diagram. For each segment, this is the velocity diagram for segment number 1, which is the rise. Then we have the velocity diagram for dwell. Then we have the velocity diagram for Uh, this is fall then dwell then rise then dwell fall and then finally dwell so what is happening if we take the time derivative of this function we will get what we will get this function
so we will discuss what should be the values of velocity before and after the dwell what should be the values what are the recommendations what are the features of a good cam what if the velocity is too high or what if the velocity function is continuous or discontinuous you can see that uh, in this cam follow system the velocity is continuous it means it goes up and then down and then zero and then it goes down and then goes up and then once again at zero level so it remains continuous throughout 360 degree rotation of the cam it means the the velocity of follower is continuous there is no abrupt changes in the velocity of the follower what about the acceleration so this is the acceleration diagram so this is for the rise this is for the dwell this is for the fall this is once again for the dwell and keeps on going so you can see that this is rise this is rise but this rise is different from this rise function the acceleration of this rise is different from acceleration of this rise because we are using different mathematical function for displacements that's why we are getting different curve or different waveform for rise function all the other things are same this rise is also happening for 60 degree rotation of cam this rise is also happening for 60 degree rotation of cam but the shape of the acceleration waveforms are different so we will discuss we will see which one is better is this is better or this one is better so we cannot comment on that one at this point of time but when we discuss the different mathematical functions and then maybe we will be able to comment whether this rise function is better or this is better as far as the kinematic analysis or acceleration or the forces or the stresses are concerned which is better so at this point of time we can say that since we are getting high acceleration for this rise as compared to this one so this is better because this is giving us low acceleration low acceleration means low dynamic forces low stresses and less possibility of uh, permanent or plastic deformation so after acceleration what we have we have this jerk function so you can see that this jerk function is discontinuous this is the rise and then it moves from here to here there is a discontinuity after the rise and before the dwell there is a discontinuity then once again it's discontinuous here it's zero and then there is a discontinuity and then this is the fall function this is once again the dwell then this is once again a rise function so once again the rise function of jerk of this one is different from this one why because we choose different mathematical function this is cycloid and this is modified trapezoid so these are basically summarized all the diagrams are summarized now we will discuss about the cam timing diagram so in this diagram what we have we have a coordinate system on the x-axis we have once again the cam angle which is the angular displacement of the cam or we can have the time and on the y-axis what we have we have the motion of the follower so that is in the units of length it can be in millimeters or inches so this is with respect to the follower this is the follower and this is the cam so what we have in this one we have four segments in the previous example what we have we have eight segments in this one we have only four segments but we don't know uh, when the cam will move from 0 to 90 what will happen to follower when the cam will move from 90 to 180 degree what will happen to follower we don't know yet but we know there are four segments in these four there will be rises there will be falls and there will be dwells okay so the first one is the low dwell you can see the green line it means the cam is rotating but we are not getting any motion in the follower so the cam will rotate from 0 to 90 degree but the follower will remain at its zero position what about the next one then there is a rise 
so now the cam is moving from 90 to 180 degree and the follower moves from 0 to 1 inch or from 0 to 25 mm or 0 to 1 mm so this is the area in which the math mathematical functions play their role how we are going from this point to this point so this is the very basic mathematical function which we can use from uh, for going from this position to this position which is a straight line okay so this is the very basic function but in the previous example you saw that linear function is not used uh, in the rise or fall segments but just for the sake of simplicity we are starting from this linear function so if we want to move from one place to the another this is the easiest way possible or easiest mathematical function which we can use that is the straight line so this in the third segment what will happen there will be a high dwell that is a high dwell and in the fourth one what will happen there will be a fall so once again we are using the linear function for fall so this is the displacement so we can take the time derivative of this diagram to get the velocity acceleration and jerk okay so now we are going to cover the example number one or the numerical number one which is the nave cam design which is a bad cam which is not acceptable cam so first of all we will design that cam and then we will comment on that one why that cam is not acceptable why it's a bad cam design what are the issues which we need to focus or which we need to discuss or what are the problems which we need to eliminate from the cam design so first of all we need to understand the problem statement what is given in the problem statement number one number one is that we have four segments the first segment is dwell it means at zero degree of cam what will happen the follower will be at zero position or zero millimeter or zero inches position and that dwell will continue for what for 90 degree rotation of cam so after 90 degree what will happen the follower will start rising it will start rising from zero towards the one inch position and the follower will achieve that one inch position when the cam complete another 90 degree rotation so first 90 degree rotation of cam there is no motion in the follower for the next 90 degree rotation of cam the follower will move from 0 to 1 inch position for the next 90 degree rotation of cam what will happen there will be no motion of follower it will it will maintain its position at 25 millimeter level and for the last 90 degree rotation of cam what will happen the follower will move from one inch position to the bottom position which is the zero position or the datum point so these are the four segments which we have okay so another information which we have that is the angular velocity of the cam which is one revolution per second or 360 degrees per second so we can use this information to convert the uh, basically x axis from theta to time we can convert it from the angular displacement domain to the time domain okay so once again what we used we used the linear function straight line function to move from 0 to 1 inch position that is the s diagram for the given question since we have no idea about the other mathematical functions so the easiest way possible was to use the straight line okay so for nine first 90 degree rotation of cam what is happening there is no motion of follower for next 90 degree rotation of cam what is happening the follower is moving from 0 to 1 inch for another 90 degree rotation of cam what is happening the follower is maintaining its higher position and for the last 90 degree rotation of cam what is happening the follower is basically moving from its high extreme position to its lower extreme position and all this is happening in one second because the angular velocity is one revolution per second or 360 degree per second so so this segment is completed in 0.25 second this one also in 0.25 second this one 0.25 
and this one point twenty five. ठीक है? It can change, but in our problem it is equally distributed. Okay, what about this one? What's this? This is the velocity diagram. ये velocity diagram किस तरह से आई है? It comes from the displacement diagram. So what is happening? If there is no displacement, what will happen to velocity? Velocity will also be zero. ठीक है? It means velocity will be zero here. Velocity will be zero here. We are talking about the velocity of the follower, not the camp. In these two segments, there is no issue with the velocity. Velocity will be zero. But about this segment, so at let's say time point two five, the velocity is zero. At t, let's say point two six. So now what is happening? The follower starts moving. What will happen? There will be abrupt increase in the velocity. There will be abrupt increase in the velocity, and that change in velocity or that velocity will remain constant. Why? Because that rate of change of displacement with respect to time is constant. So what will happen in the second segment? The velocity will maintain itself, but there is an abrupt change. So there is a discontinuity. Initially, the velocity was zero, but Abruptly, it moves from zero to four inch per second level. Then it will maintain its velocity, and then once again it will reduce to zero. It will reduce to zero because there is a high dwell once again. There is no motion of follower. If there is no displacement of follower, there will be no velocity. What will happen? The velocity will once again reduce to zero. So there is a another discontinuity. Then in the last segment, what is happening? The velocity is further reducing because the follower is moving from its higher extreme position to lower extreme position. So once again, there is a discontinuity in the velocity, and then what will happen? The follower will move with a constant velocity, and then when the follower achieves its lower position, what will happen? The velocity will once again converted or reduced to zero. So now we will convert this velocity diagram into acceleration diagram. so when there is abrupt increase in the velocity it means the velocity increased from 0 to 4 inch per second whereas the time is not changing the time is still the same 0.25 so what will happen to acceleration at time 0.25 what will be the value of acceleration infinity yes that will be infinity so now we'll move to the acceleration diagram what we are getting initially the acceleration was 0 but at point 0.25 what is happening because of the abrupt increase in the velocity we are getting a spike in the acceleration which is infinity because the velocity changed from 0 to 4 in 0 seconds so 4 divided by 0 is infinity same is happening at 0.25 or sorry 0.5 seconds 0.75 seconds and at 1 second whenever there is a change in the direction of velocity we are getting these acceleration spikes so now what we will get we will get the jerk diagram so whenever there is a uh, infinity acceleration we will get the infinity jerk as well whenever there is a what in finite acceleration we are getting infinite jerk but in both directions positive and negative so this is the jerk diagram ठीक है तो दिस इज द वेरी बेसिक कैम डिजाइन व्हिच इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल सो नाउ वी विल एनालाइज दिस एसवीएजे डायग्राम एंड देन वी विल सी व्हाई दिस एसवीएजे डायग्राम और व्हाई दिस कैम डिजाइन इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल सो द फर्स्ट वर्ड इट इज वेदर द डिजाइन इज इज एक्सेप्टेबल और नॉट सो दिस इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल व्हाई दिस इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल देखा जाए तो वी आर अचीविंग द एक्सट्रीम पोजीशंस वी आर अचीविंग द एक्सट्रीम पोजीशन ऑफ फॉलोअर From zero to one inch, and then there's a dwell. Then from one inch to zero inch, and then there's a dwell. But why this is not acceptable? These are the reasons. Number one, which mathematical function we use? We use the most simple one, which is the linear displacement function. So what is happening? Why we rejected this cam design? The first reason is abrupt increase in velocity at dwells. We don't want the follower to move. in abrupt velocities why because whenever there is a abrupt change in the velocity what will happen you will get 
इनफाइनाइट एक्सेलरेशन इनफाइनाइट एक्सेलरेशन की वजह से वट विल हैपन यू विल गेट वेरी हाई डायनामिक फोर्सेज यू विल गेट वेरी हाई स्ट्रेसिस एंड दैट स्ट्रेस फॉर फ्रैक्शन ऑफ अ सेकेंड कैन डैमेज द कैम और फॉलोअर एंड द कैम फॉलोअर मैकेज विल नॉट बी एबल टू परफॉर्म इट्स ड्यूटी तो दैट्स वाई वी डोंट वॉन्ट द विलॉसिटी टू चेंज एब्रप्टली और वी डोंट वॉन्ट द डिसकंटिन्यूटी इन द विलॉसिटी फंक्शन नंबर वन वी डोंट वॉन्ट इनफाइनाइट एक्सलेशन और यू कैन से दैट वी डोंट वॉन्ट द एक्सलेशन टू बी डिसकंटिन्यूस We want the acceleration function to be continuous. What is basically the main issue because of which we are getting this abrupt changes in velocities and due to which we are getting the infinite acceleration? That is the wrong selection of the displacement function, the mathematical function which we used for the displacement of follower from zero to one inch was incorrectly chosen. So this linear function cannot be used in cam design. we have to look for some other mathematical functions okay so what is the remedy how we can improve this design by looking for some other mathematical functions and the other thing is that we want the high derivative of displacements to be number 1 continuous finite so these are the two uh, conditions for the velocity acceleration and jerk functions the velocity and acceleration function should be continuous and finite throughout the revolution of camshaft whereas the jerk function should be finite there is a provision or there is a relaxation for the jerk function that it can be discontinuous but it should be finite it should not be infinite so now we are going to discuss the fundamental law of cam design so this is basically the criteria on the basis of which we either select a particular cam design or we reject it so what are the conditions or what are the uh, what are the requirement for a cam to be acceptable number 1 the cam function must be continuous through first derivative of displacement and second derivative of displacement it means velocity and acceleration function should be continuous there should be no discontinuity in the velocity and acceleration function number 2 the jerk function must be finite across entire interval there should not be uh, spikes infinite spikes in jerk functions theek okay? hai so these are the two conditions so we can achieve these two conditions if we have a displacement function which has third order continuity it means the displacement velocity and acceleration function should be continuous in order uh for the cam to be acceptable so now we can use different mathematical functions number one was straight line the other one is the polynomial function we have a constant we have a variable and then we have a power of that variable so let's say if we have if we are using a polynomial function of degree 3 so what will be the maximum power in that polynomial function Three. When we differentiate the displacement function into velocity, what will happen? The power will reduce to square. When we differentiate it once again, what will happen? The power will reduce to one. And when we differentiate it once again, what will happen? It will reduce to zero. So it means we need at least a polynomial functions of degree four so that we can avoid zero at acceleration, velocity, or at jerk. so this polynomial function we are going to discuss at the end of today's lecture okay so the next option is simple harmonic motion so this is the mathematical function which we can use for what for the displacement this is for the rise so here we need to understand what are those parameters number 1 this s is the displacement this h is what that is the rise so in our previous example what is the value of h in inches that will be 1 inch what about this theta theta is the basically cam angle and what about this beta beta is the difference between the start and end angle theta is the cam angle and beta is for a particular segment this difference between the 
start and end angle of cam okay so what we are using we are using this theta over beta term and we are saying so throughout the rise this is the function for rise we are using this function for rise so when we use the rise function what will happen this theta over beta term will change from 0 to 1 it means the range of this fraction is from 0 to 1 how it's possible is 0 to 1 kaise hoga it means initially what will happen this theta will be 0 and beta is fixed rise function ke liye beta hamare paas kya tha we have the beta of 90 we have the beta of 90 90 degrees aise hi this is what this is 12 then we have a rise 90 say 180 tak and the beta is 90 but the thing is the theta which we are using here is not the absolute theta this is not the absolute theta this is the instantaneous theta it means for the rise function this the value of theta will start from zero irrespective of the angular displacement of the camshaft it means for the rise function this theta will start from zero theta is zero and this beta is 90 what will happen this fraction will be zero and later on what will happen this theta will keep on increasing or kab tak increase karega the maximum value which the theta can achieve is 90 so 90 over 90 is 1 so the in this way this value of theta or b beta can can change from 0 to 1 throughout the rise function same is the case for the fall function so this is the displacement function so when we take the time derivative of this function what will happen we will get this velocity and when we take the time derivative of this velocity function we will get the acceleration and we will get the jerk ये जो theta है ये basically वो जो segment है जिस segment की बास कर रहे हैं बेशक वो rise segment हो या fall segment हो उस segment का theta है ये ठीक है कोई भी segment जारे बाद जीरो से start होगा ना जीरो से start होगे अपनी maximum value पे जाएगा which is equal to beta तो जब जीरो होगा तो this fraction is zero when theta is equal to beta what will happen this fraction will converted into one so these are the four functions ओके तो ये चीज यहां पे एक्सप्लेन की जा रही है एट थीटा इज इक्वल टू 90 ये थीटा कौन सा है दैट थीटा इज बेसिकली द एब्सोल्यूट कैमशाफ्ट एंगल व्हाट इज थीटा डैश थीटा डैश इज बेसिकली द स्टार्ट एंगल ऑफ द राइज फंक्शन सो एट थीटा 90 थीटा डैश इज व्हाट दैट इज जीरो इट मींस एट दिस पॉइंट थीटा डैश विल बी जीरो बीटा इज फिक्स्ड एट 90 बिकॉज़ we have a rise from 90 to 180 so difference is 90 so theta dash over beta will be equal to 0 at what at absolute theta of 90 what about at absolute theta of 180 so at absolute theta of 180 what is the value of theta dash that is 90 so 90 over 90 is equal to 1 so in this way we can calculate theta over beta when we take the derivative of the trigonometric function by cos what is happening if the cos is converted into sine and once again the sine will convert it into cos there is no change in the power or the degree thing is the function is only changing its phase from 0 degree to 90 degree and from 90 degree to 180 degree and it goes on okay it is converting from cos to sine and then from sine to cos and then from cos to sine this such simple harmonic functions are basically one of the candidate to be used as mathematical function for the rise and fall segments of the cam uh, forward system or mechanism so now we will analyze the svaj diagrams of this one okay so now that is the example number two the problem statement is the same but now what we will do instead of using a straight line function we will use this simple harmonic function to design the cam and then we will see the svaj diagram and then on the basis of the fundamental law of cam design we will decide whether the cam designed using that simple harmonic motion is acceptable or not here it is mentioned it's bad cam it means that cam design will also not be acceptable but we need to analyze why 
this second cam design is also rejected so number one these are the svaj diagram this is the dwell and when we use that cost function what has happened the follower moved from zero to one inch position then we have a dwell once again then we use the fall function fall function be basically wo hai. it's the same it's the same but the thing is what is happening we are just subtracting this function from one so if this is the rise function so in the fall function what will happen one minus all of this so that will convert it into fall function what about this velocity acceleration and jerk if we want fall function of these ones what you have to do we just have to attach a negative sign with these functions so in this way we can convert the rise function into fall function and fall function into rise function so these are symmetric functions okay so this is the displacement this is the displacement function or displacement diagram so when we take the time derivative of this one what is happening this is the velocity diagram for the complete revolution of cam so this velocity uh, waveform or velocity diagram is very much continuous there is no discontinuity you can see that it's zero and then it start increasing then it's decreasing once again it's zero then it keeps on going at zero velocity and then the velocity is reduced from zero to a particular value and then once again it's zero so it means displacement function is okay the velocity function is okay we want the velocity function to be continuous what about the acceleration function is this acceleration function is continuous or discontinuous this is discontinuous because there is a discontinuity here at theta 90 what is happening there is a abrupt increase in the velocity we cannot judge it using this one but there is a sharp point here if it's like the smooth transition or smooth increase in the velocity then maybe this discontinuity will not occur in the acceleration diagram but when we use the simple harmonic functions we will get the discontinuity in the acceleration diagram so because of this discontinuity we are not accepting this cam design because in the fundamental law of cam design we basically stated that the velocity and acceleration functions should be continuous and the jerk function should be finite so since this condition is not fulfilled so that cam design is not acceptable but still we will look at the jerk diagram so this jerk diagram is finite so this is okay this is continuous but the only issue is that with this acceleration diagram so because of this discontinuity in the acceleration that cam design is not acceptable so now we will discuss the uh, each segment of this svg diagram so first of all we'll discuss about the velocity function velocity function is continuous that's good what is the peak value 6.18 inch per second and we are getting that peak at the midpoint of this rise function so 6.18 inch per second aap nikal sakte hain using using what using the function ye function hamare paas hai iske through aap peak function or peak value of velocity nikal sakte hain so that is 6.18 what about the acceleration function so acceleration function is discontinuous at start and end these are the peak values peak values at the start and at the end what about the jerk function the infinite spikes are not mentioned in this diagram but there will be infinite spikes why because there is abrupt increase in the acceleration so if there is an abrupt increase in acceleration from like 0 to 77 so that 77 divided by 0 what will happen we will get the spikes in the jerk function we will get a spike here 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 the direction of that spike is not important the thing is we are getting the infinite jerk theoretically infinite jerk because of that discontinuity in the acceleration function so this is unacceptable cam design because we want or we need three conditions to be fulfilled for a cam design to be acceptable number one the velocity function should be continuous this condition is cam design fulfilled that's good number two the 
एक्सलेशन फंक्शन शुड बी कंटिन्यूस ये कंडीशन पूरी नहीं हुई सो दैट्स वाई तो यहीं पे आके आपका जो कैम है कैम डिजाइन इज अनएक्सेप्टेबल द थर्ड कंडीशन इज देर शुड बी फाइनाइट जर्क फंक्शन बट इन दिस कैम डिजाइन बट वी आर गेटिंग वी आर गेटिंग इन फाइनाइट जर्क फंक्शन सो दैट्स वाई आउट ऑफ थ्री कंडीशन ओनली वन कंडीशन इज फुलफिल्ड सो दैट्स वाई दिस कैम डिजाइन इज अनएक्सेप्टेबल ओके द कंक्लूजन इज इफ यू यूज सिंपल हारमोनिक फंक्शन फॉर द डिजाइन ऑफ कैम and that cam follower mechanism has 12 then that simple harmonic function will not be able to give us the acceptable cam design but if we use the same a simple harmonic functions without the dwells it means we have a rise and we have a fall then we will get an acceptable cam design you are getting my point so in the previous example what we have we have two dwells and we were using the simple harmonic functions as the displacement function and we got those issues because of which the cam design was not acceptable but if we use the same displacement function in a cam follower mechanism in which there is no dwell then we will get the acceptable svg diagram how so this is what this is svg diagram of a cam follower mechanism in which there is no dwell what we are getting we are, we are getting a rise and we are getting a fall this is the displacement rise fall and it will keeps on going okay so we have a rise function for 180 degree rotation of cam and we have a fall function for 180 degree of cam so what about the velocity so velocity is continuous it's zero here it's zero here it's zero here and this trend will keeps on going for the rotation of cam shaft what about this acceleration function so is this acceleration function is continuous or discontinuous continuous because when we combine this segment with this segment let's say we are copying and we are pasting it here so it will the points will be joined so it is continuous same is the case here the points will be joined and it's a continuous segment so this acceleration function is also continuous velocity is also continuous and we are getting like what we are getting the finite value of jerk so this cam design is acceptable but this is not the cam design considered in the example this is something which is a simple cam but we are not talking about this one we are discussing a cam design in which we have two dwells and we have a rise and a fall function we we still uh, unable to find a suitable mathematical function so why this is acceptable because the velocity function is continuous the acceleration function is continuous and the jerk is finite so this is acceptable cam design okay so now we will move to another mathematical function which is cycloidal function or the sine function so now we are changing our approach instead of selecting instead of selecting the displacement function and then uh, take the derivative of that displacement function to get the velocity and then derivative of velocity to get the acceleration what we are doing we are starting from the acceleration now because the acceleration is the most critical parameter out of svaj because the acceleration should be limited that should be continuous uh, that should not be beyond a particular level the issue will be high dynamic forces and high stresses and which can deform our we are using this acceleration function this is a sinusoidal function we are calling it cycloidal function as well this is a simple uh, sine function this will create what this will create a full sine wave what about this one c so value of c will define the amplitude the amplitude of this sine function and what about this theta over beta this is same which we discussed in the previous topic that theta is the instantaneous angle of the rise function and that beta is the difference between the start and end angle of rise function so in order to get the velocity and displacement what we have to do we have to integrate this acceleration so we know that acceleration is basically rate of change of velocity with respect to time or with respect to angular displacement because we know that we can convert the angular displacement into time and vice versa so what we are doing we are integrating this function of acceleration to get the velocity so what we have to do we have to integrate what we have to integrate this acceleration function to get the velocity when we take the integration of sin what we will get we will get the cos and 
this term will be divided by what that will be divided by 2 by over beta the 2 by over beta jo hai basically jab divide hoga usko jab upar leke jayenge to basically kya ho jayega wo inverse hoke multiply ho jayega and we are getting this integration constant in order to get the value of this integration constant what we have to do we have to use a boundary condition what is the boundary condition which is related to velocity that is when theta is equal to 0 which theta we are talking about we are talking about instantaneous theta of the rise function it means the theta from which the rise function is starting so that is the starting point of the rise function so at the starting point of the rise function what should be the value of velocity that should be 0 because if it's not 0 it means the velocity function is not continuous and if the velocity function is not continuous and there is an abrupt change in the velocity what will happen you will get infinite acceleration so this is the condition the condition is at theta is equal to 0 this is not the absolute theta of the cam this is the uh, starting point of the rise function so at the starting point of the rise function the velocity should be 0 so we will use or we will put that boundary condition in what in this equation number 6 when we do so what will happen we will get the value of this k1 so this is the value of the constant and we will attach that value or we will put that value here and this is the velocity function this is the velocity function so we started instead of displacement we started from the acceleration and then we integrated that in acceleration function to get the velocity function and now we will integrate the velocity function to get what displacement function so this is the velocity function we have to integrate it with respect to theta once again we will get this uh, displacement function with uh, integration constant so here we once again put a boundary condition and that is at the start of the rise function the what will be the value of displacement that should be zero because before that rise function we have a dwell we have a low dwell so at low dwell what what should be the value of displacement that should be equal to zero it means when we put all of those values in this term or in this equation we will get the value of k2 which is zero so when we put k2 is equal to zero in this equation we will get this displacement there is another unknown which is c c is basically what that is the amplitude of acceleration function what is the maximum value of acceleration which we can allow in our cam that is the c so in order to calculate the c there is another boundary condition and that is when theta is equal to beta it means that is the end of the rise function so when theta is equal to beta what should be the value of s that should be equal to the maximum lift which is denoted by h so that should be equal to h s should be equal to h so we will use these values in this equation and then we can get what we can get the value of c so this is the value of c so now we will use this value of c with acceleration with velocity and with displacement so these are the acceleration velocity and displacement what displacement terms or functions which we are going to use to design the cam once again if we take the derivative of this acceleration with respect to theta what will happen we will get this j which is jerk so using those functions now we will once again construct svaj diagram for the same problem which we discussed in the previous slides and then we will analyze the svaj diagram and then we will decide whether that uh, cam design is acceptable or not so once again the problem is the same we need a load well we need a rise of one inch we need a high dwell and then we need a fall from one inch to zero and the angular uh, velocity of the cam shaft or the cam is one revolution per second or two pi radians per second so this is the svaj diagram which we are getting when we use these functions these svaj functions so if we use these functions what we are getting we are getting this svaj diagram so now we will analyze this svaj diagram so this is the displacement there's nothing wrong with the displacement there's a 12 then we are achieving one inch then there's a high 12 and then we are achieving a zero inch or we are achieving the datum point okay what about the velocity function so velocity function also seems to be okay we have the zero velocity then there's a smooth increase in the velocity 
and then it reduced to zero at the dwell. Then the velocity is zero at the dwell. We are talking about the follower velocity, and then once again at the start of the fall function, the velocity is zero, and then it it reduced to minus something, and then it comes back to once again the zero level. That is the velocity function. Velocity function also appear to be okay. What about the acceleration function? So this acceleration function uh, we are starting from zero, and then what is happening? There is no discontinuity. It's very much continuous. So this is the sine wave which we are getting. Acceleration function. Then there's zero acceleration. Then once again this is the sine wave which we are getting. So this is the complete acceleration function for rise and fall. So there is no issue with the acceleration function also because it is very much continuous and it is zero at the dwell rise, rise dwell, fall dwell and dwell fall interjunctions or junctions. So what about the jerk? Jerk is not continuous because there is a discontinuity but that is finite. So the condition for jerk function is it should be finite. There is no compulsion of continuity on the jerk function. The only compulsion or jerk function is that it should be continuous. So all the three conditions are basically uh, fulfilled by this cam design. So we can say that this cam design is acceptable. So these are the peak values which we are getting. Velocity is continuous. Acceleration is continuous. Jerk function is finite. And these are different values which we are getting. So we are getting the angular acceleration of what? 100 inch per second. So this is acceptable because the velocity function is continuous, because the acceleration function is continuous and because the jerk function is finite. The only issue is that we are getting high acceleration or high velocity. We don't want that acceleration to be that much higher. This is the first cam which is now accepted. But now what we want to do? We want this acceleration to reduce. Why? Because if the acceleration is reduced, what will happen? Dynamic forces will be reduced, stresses will be reduced and there will be no harm on the components or the service life of the components will be increased. So that's why we will try or we will modify our mathematical function to reduce this acceleration. We want this acceleration to be reduced. We want this velocity to be reduced. So till now, we used what? We used a sine or cycloidal function and we get a SVAG diagram which is as per the recommendation of the fundamental law of cam design. But in that SVAG diagram, we saw that we are getting very high acceleration and now we want that acceleration to be reduced. So now we will see how we can reduce that acceleration and velocity because the lower velocity and lower acceleration is highly recommended because of those stress and uh, deformation issues. So now what we will do, instead of using a single mathematical function, we will use a combination of more than one functions in order to limit the acceleration. So there should be a value of acceleration we should have in our mind that this is the maximum acceleration which we can allow in a cam forward mechanism. So if we want to start from that threshold value, then what kind of mathematical function we have to use? We can use the square wave. So in square wave, what we can do? In square wave, we can actually limit the maximum value of acceleration. I'm displaying this square wave as a acceleration function. If I want to limit that acceleration function, like from 100, I want it to be reduced to 80, then this amplitude should be 80 and this should be minus 80. And then, after taking derivative of this term, we can get the jerk and after taking the integration of these uh, acceleration function, we can get the displacement and velocity. But what will happen if we take the derivative of this acceleration function, what will happen? There will be infinite, infinite jerk. Why? Because there is abrupt change in the acceleration. And because of that abrupt change in the acceleration, what we are getting? We are getting infinite jerks. It means this acceleration function is not acceptable. Square wave is not acceptable. So now what we have to do? 
we have to modify we have to modify this square wave so this green wave form is basically the acceleration function so now we will modify it how we will modify it we will convert this square into trapezoid we will convert this square into trapezoid how so this is the actual square wave what we are doing we are basically adding a slanted line instead of a vertical line a slanted line here and slanted line here so now why this level is increased because because of that slanted line this area is removed this area is removed so in order to cover up this area now we have to increase it a bit because there is a limit of acceleration we cannot reduce it beyond that because this is maximum value so that's why we kept that area under the curve constant and since this area is removed so we increase that level a bit the same thing we will do on the lower portion of the acceleration so we converted this square wave into trapezoidal wave so now when we take the jerk of this trapezoidal function what will happen so instead of getting the infinite jerk we are getting the finite value of jerks we are getting this function these are the finite jerk values so it means this is acceptable what else we can do we can further modify this trapezoidal acceleration function how now we will see how we can further modify this trapezoidal function or trapezoidal acceleration function so what's the issue here the issue is the jerk function is not smooth discontinuous jerk function so in the trapezoidal acceleration which is this one we are getting what we are getting discontinuous jerk function so discontinuous jerk function is acceptable but the thing is we will get very high we will get very high vibrations due to this discontinuous jerk function and we want this jerk function to be continuous to be more smooth so that we can reduce the vibrations of the cam follower mechanism as well so in order to reduce the vibrations or in order to make this jerk function continuous what we will do we will modify what we will modify this trapezoidal acceleration function and how we will modify it we will convert into modified trapezoidal acceleration by combining the sine function and the square function so you can here you can see that this is what this is a sine wave what we are doing we are basically dividing this sine wave into four equal parts so this is like a part this is b this is c this is d this is a segment this is b segment this is c segment and this is d segment okay so now this is a square wave what we are doing we are converting this square wave into eight portions so if this is the complete rise function so it will be denoted by what beta so this is zero and here it should be beta zero to beta okay so what we did we divided this rise function or square wave into eight parts this is first part this is combined second and third part this is fourth part this is fifth part this is sixth and seventh part and this is eighth part and now instead of using this section what we will do we will use the first section the segment a of the sine wave here and then instead of using this segment of square wave what we will do we will use the segment b and c of sine wave here and instead of using this section what we will do we will use the section d of the sine wave here in this way so this is segment a of the sine wave this is segment b and c of sine wave and this is segment d and then this is the modified or this is the combined a function or the modified trapezoidal function which we are going to use to find out the acceleration so now we should look at the jerk function what are the changes which we experience when we convert this trapezoidal into modified trapezoidal function the jerk diagram will be now more smooth and there will be no discontinuity because 
so now there is no abrupt change in the acceleration since there is no abrupt change so what will happen the jerk function will be more smooth and there will be no discontinuity and there will be no vibrations or there will be reduced vibration as compared to the simple tribal order function there is another modification which we can do and that is on the sinusoidal acceleration the function which we used in the example 3 so now what we will do we will modify that sinusoidal or cycloidal function us function mein kya issue aa rahe the we were getting very high acceleration so now we will convert that sinusoidal acceleration into modified sinusoidal acceleration so what are the steps number 1 we have a sine wave of a particular frequency and we divided that sine wave into four parts this is segment a this is b this is c and this is d okay what else we have another sine wave we have another sine wave which has what lower frequency as compared to the previous one or higher time period so we did the same with this sine wave as well we divided this sine wave into four parts this is segment a this is b this is c and this is d okay so now we have to combine these two sine waves to make a one acceleration function okay so we are taking the four segments we are taking the first segment from the sine wave 1 we are taking the second and third segment from the sine wave 2 and we are taking the fourth segment from the sine wave 4 if this is like 1 inch so this will be how much 3 because the time period of sine wave 2 is 3 times as compared to the time period of sine wave 1 so that's why when we used the second portion of sine wave 2 instead of this portion what will happen we will get we will get this 3 times length or 3 times the length of the segment b as compared to a so in this way we have the modified sinusoidal function we can use this function as a acceleration function we have the same problem but now what we will do instead of using the cycloidal or sinusoidal function we are going to use the combined function and that is the modified trapezoidal function so we will use it for acceleration what is this function this is modified trapezoidal function because this square wave is converted into trapezoidal wave and this tra modified trapezoidal function is basically the combination of sine wave and square wave so now we will analyze this sph diagram i'm using the software dynacam in order to get those diagrams okay so we started with this one ab aap acceleration ka function aa gaya tha acceleration ke function se hum we can get the velocity function we can get the displacement function and we can get the jerk function so if you look at Uh, the velocity function it is very much continuous it means it's acceptable will uh, acceleration function is also continuous it is acceptable what about the jerk still there are discontinuities in the jerk there are issues in the jerk so we will see how we can address those issues but the thing is if we analyze it further we can see that the main objective which was to reduce the acceleration is achieved using the modified trapezoidal function what level or what peak value of acceleration we were getting when when we were using cycloidal function what was the value of peak acceleration that was 100 so now instead of using the pure sine wave or the pure square wave we are using the combination of sine and square wave and number 1 we are getting the acceptable cam design number 2 the acceleration is reduced so these values are also coming from the software which are using to draw these diagrams so the only issue which we are getting is the jerk the jerk is not continuous if jerk is not continuous the cam design is acceptable but the thing is the cam will experience the vibrations which is not good for the mechanism so the only the only issue is relatively high peak jerk and there is another issue which is what the discontinuity in the jerk function whereas the main three conditions for the cam design are already fulfilled and we reduce the acceleration as well so if we use this modified sine function as acceleration function we will get this displacement we will get this acceleration both are okay and we will get this jerk 
the jerk is still discontinuous but it is more smooth as compared to the previous one so you can see that this is relatively smooth compared to this one because in this one there are abrupt changes this is what this is modified trapezoid whereas in modified sine this is relatively smooth so if you look at the peak value of modified trapezoid the peak value of jerk is 39.25 inch per second cube whereas in this one the value peak value is increased there is no doubt that peak value is increased but the thing is now it is smooth relatively smooth as compared to the modified trapezoidal function ok so basically the thing is if we use the different functions there are trade offs if we reduce the acceleration what is happening the jerk is increasing it depends what application uh, you are developing the or you are designing the cam uh, follower mechanism for what application so on the basis of that one you have select the most suitable function for the acceleration velocity and displacement the other thing which we are achieving with this modified sine function is that the velocity is very much reduced now it's 7 inches per second whereas for the previous one it was 8 inches so although the jerk is increased the velocity is on the decreasing trend when we use what the modified sine function and the other thing is that the jerk function is relatively smooth as compared to the modified trapezoidal function okay so what are the advantages of using what modified sine function these are the advantages lowest value of velocity means suitable for high mass system if the follower is very heavy we are basically using that follower in a cam follower system and if that follower is moving at very high velocity what will happen it will have very high inertia and that change in direction can damage the bearings or the other intermediate parts so it's better to reduce the velocity it is good for the service life of the mechanism the other thing is that this uh, the jerk function is very much smooth so if the jerk function is smooth then the vibration will be reduced and the service life of the components will be increased this is the analysis of modified sine function okay so abhi tak jo discussion kiya that was only related to the rise functions so if we want to convert the rise function into fall function what we have to do if we are talking about the displacement we just have to subtract rise displacement from maximum lift h okay jo bhi displacement ka function hoga usko maximum lift se subtract karenge so we will get what we will get the fall displacement function and uh, what, what about the velocity acceleration and jerk function of fall we can achieve the velocity and acceleration and jerk fall functions by just uh, attaching a negative sign with the rise velocity acceleration and jerk function so, so in this way we can easily convert the rise function into a fall function provided we are using the same mathematical function for the rise and fall we have the provision available to use different functions for the rise and for the fall as we see the first diagram or in the initial slides okay so this is the last topic which is the polynomial functions now so now what we are going to do we are going to use the polynomial functions for the displacement velocity acceleration and jerk so what is the characteristic of polynomial function so if we take the derivative of polynomial function what happened to polynomial function its degree is reduced by one so this is the general form of a polynomial function in which s is the displacement x is the independent variable x ko hum as time bhi likh sakte hain aur as theta over beta bhi likh sakte hain since we are using this ratio in the mathematical function so we will use this ratio here and we will replace x with this one and what about these c's these are basically unknown constant coefficients theek hai ji so this is the this is what this is displacement polynomial function what is the degree of this polynomial function that is n the maximum power which a polynomial function or any term has that is the degree of polynomial and how many terms we have we have n plus 1 so in this polynomial how many terms we have we will have n plus 1 degree of polynomial plus 1 so this is simple introduction of polynomial functions so now we will use these polynomial functions to uh, construct the svag diagram okay it's the same problem Okay, so what we have to do now, 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अब इस पोलिनोमियल में देखिएगा डिस्प्लेसमेंट पोलिनोमियल में वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यूज ऑफ दीज कॉफिशेंट्स हमें इन कॉफिशेंट्स की वैल्यूज नहीं पता तो इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड द वैल्यूज ऑफ दोज कॉफिशेंट्स वट वी नीड वी नीड द बाउंड्री कंडीशन सो फॉर द राइज फंक्शन वी हैव सिक्स बाउंड्री कंडीशन एंड फॉर द फॉल फंक्शन वी हैव सिक्स बाउंड्री कंडीशन राइट नाउ वी विल फोकस ऑन द राइज फंक्शन वट आर दिक्स बाउंड्री कंडीशन फॉर द राइज फंक्शन दोज आर वेन थीटा इज इक्वल टू जीरो थीटा ऑफ वट थीटा ऑफ राइज फंक्शन एट थीटा इज इक्वल टू जीरो और एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ राइज फंक्शन वट शुड बी द वैल्यू ऑफ डिस्प्लेसमेंट दैट शुड बी जीरो वट शुड बी द वैल्यू ऑफ विलोसिटी दैट शुड बी जीरो वट शुड बी दट शुड बी द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्सलेशन दैट शुड बी जीरो अदरवाइज इफ इफ दिलोसिटी एंड एक्सलेशन आर नॉट जीरो then the velocity and acceleration function will be discontinuous so that's why so these are the three boundary conditions at the start of the rise function and at the end of the rise function when theta is equal to beta 1 beta 1 is basically delta angle of rise function so at theta is equal to beta 1 what should be the value of displacement that should be equal to the lift which is h what should be the value of velocity the value of velocity should be zero at the end of the rise function at the end of the rise function the value of the acceleration should be equal to zero as well so these are the condition for the rise function similarly we can write the condition for the fall function so at the start of the fall function what should be the displacement that should be h whereas velocity and acceleration should be zero at the end of the fall function what should be the value of displacement that should be zero what should be the value of velocity and acceleration those should be zero that is the polynomial function for the displacement what we did we just replaced the x with theta or beta and why we selected a polynomial of degree 5 because right now we have six conditions six boundary conditions for the rise function this is the rise function so since we have six condition it means we can find out the values of six unknown constant coefficients which are c0 1 2 3 4 5 if we use a polynomial of seven seven terms what will happen one of the unknowns will not be able to be measured or calculated because we don't have the condition for that one so since we have six boundary conditions so we used a polynomial having six terms or six unknown coefficients so if a polynomial has how many terms six terms then what should be the degree of polynomial that is number of terms minus 1 so it means the uh, degree of the polynomial will be 5 so this is the polynomial function which we are using to uh, construct our svaj diagram so now what we will do we will take the derivative of this displacement function to get the velocity function so it's very simple c not will be eliminated because this is a constant and we will get with other five terms 1 2 3 4 5 terms so the taking the derivative of any term is very easy you need to uh, take this power down and then reduce the power and then multiply this 1 over beta with that term so 1 over beta is common in each and every term so that's why we are taking out this 1 over beta so in the similar way what we can do we can take the derivative of velocity and we can get the acceleration function and we can take the derivative of acceleration function and we can get the jerk function so now what we will do in those equations we will now insert the boundary conditions and try to find out the values of these coefficients so what we will do in the displacement function we are using the first boundary condition which is theta is equal to 0 when theta is equal to 0 s should be 0 so when we insert theta is equal to 0 and s is equal to 0 in this equation what we will get we will get c0 is equal to 0 c0 is equal to 0 it means we get the value of first unknown coefficient okay so what about the second condition second condition was when theta is equal to 0 what is this theta it means the rise function is just starting so at the start of the rise function the velocity should be 0 so since this boundary condition is related to velocity so we have to insert those two values of theta and velocity in the velocity function so when we do so what we will get we will get the value of c1 that is the second coefficient which is also equal to 0 when we put theta is equal to 0 and v is equal to 0 so
so now what we will do we will use the third boundary conditions and put it in the acceleration function so this boundary condition is saying that at the start of the rise function what is happening the acceleration is zero so when we do so what we will get we will get the value of c2 is equal to zero c2 is what the third unknown coefficient so now we have the values of three unknown coefficient using the three boundary conditions now we are left with three boundary condition for the rise function the next one is at the end of the rise function when theta is equal to beta what is the value of displacement that is equal to h so when we use these values in the original displacement function what we will get we will get this equation which says the sum of c3 c4 and c5 is equal to h where h is what that is the lift that is the lift of the follower so now what we will do we will use the fifth boundary condition in the velocity function which says at theta is equal to beta or at the end of the rise function the velocity should be equal to zero so when we insert that those values in this function what we will get we will get this equation which says 3c3 plus 4c4 plus 5c5 should be equal to zero so this is the fifth boundary condition and now we will put the last boundary condition which says at the end of the rise function the acceleration should be zero so we will put theta is equal to beta and acceleration is equal to zero in this polynomial function of acceleration and we will get this equation which says 6c3 plus 12c4 plus 20c5 is equal to zero so now we have three equations and three unknowns which are these equations equation number 20 21 and 22 and what are the unknowns c3 c4 and c5 we can solve those equations simultaneously to get the values of c3 c4 c5 when we do so what will happen we have the values of c3 c4 c5 c3 is equal to 10 h c4 is equal to minus 15 h and c5 is equal to 60 uh, 6 h okay so now what we will do we will insert those values in the original displacement velocity acceleration and jerk functions so these are the values we have the value of c0 c1 and c2 as well which are zero so we will put all those values in this function and this is the displacement function which are, which we are getting so this is the final displacement function we will do the same with the velocity function this is the velocity function we will put the values of c1 c2 c3 c4 and c5 in this one and we will get the velocity function with all the knowns we will do the same with the acceleration function and we will do the same with the jerk function so now we have the svaj functions available and with the help of those functions we can build this svaj diagram so now let's analyze this svaj diagram displacement is very much okay it's continuous velocity is also continuous acceleration is also continuous there is discontinuity in jerk function but the jerk function is very much smooth so if the jerk function is smooth what does it mean it means the cam follower mechanism will have reduced vibrations so these are basically uh, the analysis of the svaj diagram the velocity is 7.5 which is not the lowest the lowest which we get was 7 the uh, acceleration is 92.3 which is also not the lowest but not the highest which is intermediate value but the thing is the acceleration function is continuous jerk function is discontinuous but it's very much smooth so vibration will be reduced so this polynomial is basically what this is known as 3 4 5 polynomial okay 3 4 5 polynomial is quickly because we are only getting the value of third fourth and fifth unknown coefficients whereas the unknown coefficient 0, 1 and 2 are basically equal to 0. So since we have only coefficient 3, 4 and 5 uh, which have non-zero values that's why this polynomial is known as 3, 4, 5 polynomial. So now we will do the same numerical. So now we will do the same numerical using 4, 5, 6, 7 polynomial. So what is this 4, 5, 6, 7 polynomial? Is we basically kya hoga? Jo uh, coefficient 0, 1, 2, 3 honge, the values of those coefficient will be 0. 
whereas the coefficient 4 5 6 7 will have non zero values okay so the problem is the same but now what we will do we will add two more boundary conditions which are at the start of the rise function jerk will also be zero and at the end of the rise function jerk will also be zero so now we have eight boundary condition for the rise function it means we can now find out eight unknown coefficient it means now we can handle a polynomial with eight terms which means that we can now use a polynomial of degree 7 as displacement function so the boundary condition will be more or less the same for the fall function as well so so now we can use a polynomial of degree 7 so this is the polynomial for the displacement function what we will do we will take the derivative of this one to get the velocity function we will get we will take the derivative of this one with respect to theta to get the acceleration function and we will take the derivative of this acceleration function with respect to theta to get the jerk function so now what we will do we will insert the boundary conditions one by one and we will find out the values of the unknowns unknown coefficients c0 c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 and c7 and then what we will do we will insert those values of coefficients in what in these equations of s v a and j so in this way we can have the uh, displacement velocity acceleration and jerk functions available with us and using those functions which we can get we can get this svaj diagram so in this svaj diagram you can see that what is happening the only change which we are getting is that now the jerk function is continuous which is an achievement so if we use 4 5 6 7 polynomial as displacement function then we can get the jerk function as a continuous function and the jerk function is also very much smooth so these are the benefits of using the three uh, four five six seven polynomial function the drawback is acceleration is very much increased velocity is also increased but the thing is now the jerk function is continuous so if you are using if you want to use or if you want uh, to design a cam follower mechanism for an application in which you want the vibrations to be at minimum level then you should go for the four five six seven polynomial function